Hello, friends on the internet. I am uh, Justin, and I'm here to uh, do some comparison uh, between what it's like writing browser tests in Capybara versus uh, using the new upstart tool Cypress, uh, which has become very popular in the like general broader JavaScript community. Whereas, uh, you know, a lot of traditional QA departments, as well as like uh, people from the Ruby and Rails community, continue uh, uh, using Capybara, which we've known and used for years as sort of a bridge to Selenium, which is the 800 pound gorilla uh, a juggernaut, you know, that we all use for uh, 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 browser testing and have for years and years. And so a lot of people are interested in Cypress. And so I want to kind of walk it through its paces. Uh, this is a, a new thing for me. I haven't done a lot of screencasting for a few years. Uh, and uh, in the interest of not spending 80 hours to produce uh, 20 minutes of content, uh, I am not going to prepare for this. So I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. I'm going to screw up. Uh, I'll try to like cut things down and post uh, to, to speed things up so I'm not wasting your time. Uh, but without further ado, uh, let's dive in. So this is going to be Cypress versus Capybara. Uh, <laughs> didn't know Capybara had a logo, uh, but that is it. Uh, so today, uh, again, my name is Justin. You can find me on Twitter and GitHub with uh, just looking for my uh, surname as my handle. Uh, feel free to email me anytime you like, justin at testdouble.com. Uh, and this is going to go up at our blog, uh, blog.testdouble.com, where we have this and other fun, neat, free content to enjoy. All right. So today's agenda, uh, we're going to start by looking at the installation and the setup of the tool tools to so, so keep things kind of like on our toes. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to set everything up in one tool first and then do the setup story for the, the other tool. Uh, uh, then we'll write a test using each of them, uh, to kind of show just, you know, what the flow feels like as a developer. Um, you know, it, in particular, one of the important things about, uh, uh, getting comfortable with, uh, uh, any browser based tool is figuring out like, how do I select stuff in the DOM? Uh, and then how do I interact with different elements? Uh, obvious stuff like form elements, clicking on links and that sort of thing. Uh, but additionally, you know, like you might have drag and drop or you might have more complex interactions. Uh, and those can often be the thing that just like make a particular testing tool non-viable. So we're gonna look at just basic selection interaction. I'll share a little bit of stories um, uh, if examples don't emerge more organically. Um, yeah, the thing that I think makes this comparison most interesting is that the development feedback loop for both of these tools is very different. Uh, in many ways, Capybara was written as a response to Selenium, whose development story was very fraught with writing custom Java classes and methods um, uh, and very, very slow development feedback loops. And so at the time, Capybara felt like a breath of fresh air. But now, uh, because uh, Cypress hosts your application inside of a browser frame, you end up with a lot richer, faster uh, feedback, including interactive uh, ability to like detect new selectors and that sort of thing, as well as to debug inside the browser. Uh, so Cypress has like a, a, in my opinion, a much better uh, development feedback loop story, uh, at least at this point. Uh, and you know, they're, they're heavily investing in the product. So I, I imagine it'll only get better from here. Um, related to that, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about debugging and troubleshooting, try to show some edge cases. I'm, I'm sure this will kind of come up naturally throughout because I'm just going to screw up constantly. Uh, and then, uh, you know, writing the test is 80% of the cost, unlike most tests, right? Where you like writing the test isn't that hard. Usually you just like you exercise some behavior and then you make an assertion. The thing about browser tests is that like just getting it to work once is very, very difficult. Um, and so we tend to spend a lot of effort to get that story working well. And that's where, you know, Cypress spends a lot of time. Um, but then, you know, from that moment forward, they also happen to be the slowest tests in our build. And so that we incorporate them into our build well, that when they fail, we get reasonable, like, you know, our test artifacts, whether that's an error message or a image or a video, uh, looking at like what that's like when we run it headlessly is just part of a larger test suite. Uh, you know, that's really important. And then finally, uh, setting these things up for continuous integration. So, so that's going to be the agenda of the day. Uh, I, I'm probably going to have to do this over like numerous takes, uh, and it's going to probably be pretty long because I am long winded. So here we go. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, like I said, I've done absolutely no, uh, uh prep yet. Uh, so let's just start. I'm going to, um, so today for want of a, a browser based application, that's like non-trivial and somewhat complicated. I'm going to use my own hobby project, Kame Same, to test with. 
Um, Kamesame is a Japanese language testing tool. Uh, it, what it does is it helps you memorize Japanese words uh, if, you're, if you're a language learner. Um, and apparently my internet is very slow right now, so we're gonna run it locally. Uh, let's see, so, um, how do we wanna roll? So I think first up, I'll just start up my terminal how I always do, first open up a Vim window, have a, a spare terminal around, and then I like to start up Rails. And uh, in modern day Rails, where we also have Webpacker serving up assets and run that separately. Um, I'm not fancy, I just use separate terminals for both. Open that up. Ah, so that's what Kamisami's homepage looks like. You know, it's just like a big vomit of images and statistics and graphs and whatnot um, out of the box. Uh, I'm gonna check over here to localhost. Sweet, all right, cool. So I just nuked my database prior to uh, doing this. Uh, so that was probably foolish. So what I'm gonna do instead, in the interest of time, is... I should mention, I have done zero tests for this application. Currently, the only test is it runs a linter. Uh, so there's probably gonna be like a, a lot of uh, me running in fast motion with like a vaudevillian soundtrack behind here as I like realize like I've got zero test data story set up. Um, but in the meantime, at least to get dev happy, I have, oh goodness, what did I name it? Uh, Hey, if you use Postgres, this app called Postico is really neat. I haven't paid for it, <laughs> but uh, let's see, it shows all my databases here. So, uh, Kamesame 2020-02-20 Kamesame. There we go, that's what. So 2020-02-20 Kamesame, so this is a production backup. All right, let's try that. We're probably gonna have to restart Rails, one would think. And hey, okay, cool, neat. Well, this is uh, based on uh, you know month old backup. Just enough to at least like show what the app basically looks like. Um, it's a large app, and it's not um, a traditional server side rendered app. Uh, so so everything we go through here is like these are all rendered by um, Preact or React like functional components. One big gigantic JavaScript file uh, just drives the entire page. Um, and so the, uh, the, the Rails server is really just API. And that means that like a lot of traditional stuff that Capybara is good at, like running an, a, a rack uh, request response environment and testing that without JavaScript, that doesn't really buy us anything here. Uh, we may as well just test the API separately. And so we're really testing these two tools as like driving browsers for JavaScript interactivity, uh, which is where Cypress is you know designed to be good. Um, okay, so uh, let's start by uh, seeing what happens when you run Rails test. All right, cool. So we're starting from scratch. I want to generate a system test. Can Rails generate a system test? So I should say <laughs> that Capybara can be installed as just a gem. Like if I went into my gem file here, I can just say like, all right, bleh, testing group test do. Is it called test or test? Test singular. Uh, you know what? And really at the end of the day, anything that you put in the test group, you really should put in development too, or else it's a pain because like you're often, when you're running rake tasks, you're not in test mode, you're in development. So we're just gonna stick them here. Um, so I could, of course, just say, hey, gem capybara, and I could roll my own thing. But our friend Eileen Yushatil from Rails Core uh, uh, in Rails 5 something, I want to say, uh, uh, created uh, system tests as, as just part of Rails. Uh, and they do require that you have a couple of gems that I've probably ripped out of here. Um, uh, can I just say this? Probably not system, it's, it's D, Rails G system test. Hey, look at that, it can do that. All right, hello. All right, so <laughs> did that do something? <laughs> test system, sure didn't. All right, uh, well, what if I do exactly the example given to me by our help? Menu, general stories. <laughs> All right, so apparently this depends on the presence of something or other. Uh, so 
we shall go and endeavor to figure out what that is. The easiest way to figure out how Rails works out of the box is not to use the documentation, but rather to just like uh, Rails new something. So what version is this? Yeah, that's good enough. Rails new lol. And of course, I already have a folder called temp lol because I'm not a creative person. Uh, Rails new, uh, well, I probably already have a foo then. So bar? Yeah, I didn't have a bar already. Okay, so it's going to install a bunch of gems. I don't really care. I'm not gonna skip that. I'm not gonna run anything out of here. I'm just gonna go dive into this bar and uh, look at the gem file. Da, 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 da. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Okay, so it, here we go. All right, well, they've simplified this. So I do just say I want Capybara, and I also say I want Selenium WebDriver. And if I don't want to have to deal with um, installation of particular web drivers in Selenium parlance, this is like a, 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 a program used to manipulate the browser and then to phone home back to Selenium, whether that's over the wire API is like a jar uh, running some Java instance uh, or some other process. Okay, well, now I know I can just copy paste that. Neat. I don't know why Capybara is locked to a particular version. Typically, I don't do that. And also, you'll see I'm uh, using standard RB, our, our um, test level sponsors, the, the linter standard, which if you write any Ruby and you want to be my friend, you'll be my friend if you use standard. So just pull it down. You can uh, uh, integrate with your browser, uh, with your editor or whatever. You just run <clears throat> either bundle exec standard RB with or without the fix tag. I, I tend to use it as rake, so it'd be rake standard and just run it as part of my build. And anyway, uh, it, it didn't like that because standard requires you to use these double quotes everywhere. So here we go. See how long this takes. Okay, that was fast. Um, all right, so we're pretty good there. So now, Rails G system test. Hello, Capybara. Uh, you know what, it told us to use and let's just see. Oh my goodness. Did you not work? Hmm. Well, if the generator doesn't work, we can always make our own file. <laughs> so test system. Uh, 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 hello, Capybara, and I guess if I say, I gotta name it after the file, Capybara, uh, is it, it's probably like active support system test case. Let's see what this does. So I'm going to try run now. Um, so Rails has its test command. This doesn't run system tests or the browsery stuff, just like normal um, uh, unit tests that also, of course, all talk to the database by default. Um, so, but this one opens up browser. So we're going to call Rails test system. Well, wouldn't you know it? It doesn't know how to. Hmm. Is, is that a rake test? Oh my. Did I just like rip out some big portion of Rails testing infrastructure from this app? I mean, it doesn't seem that way. Hmm. So far, this is a pretty entertaining screencast, I'd, I'd wager. Watch Justin spend an hour just trying to set up a very basic tool. Um, okay. <sighs> Rails system test. Let's start with the... Start with the guides. Okay, so we know that didn't work for us. 
Yep, it should create something like that. Aha, application system test case, which we don't have, but we should have. Oh boy. Um, hmm. Yeah, because if I just say this, it's totally not going to work, right? Like, cause I, I, there's no way that I... Okay. Application system. Oh, hey, look, I do have one of these. Hey, all right, neat. Well, okay, cool. So we're going to just, we're going to do exactly this. We're going to go to our Hello Capybara thing. This is totally going to work this time, and we're going to... Um, copy paste this. <laughs> Neat. It looks like it selected the whole thing. I just want... Where'd it go? Uh, right here. Yeah. No, I just want that word. Thank you. Good grief. This is making me doubt a lot of things about myself right here. So you don't know how... Uh, Alright, well, so we can always, um, see what Rake's able to build by just saying Rake T. So there's standard, there's web drivers. Have I ripped out test unit? Did I expressly build? I must have. I must have had skip test turned on when I made this project. Well, that's not, I mean, it was uh, very uh, prescient of me to know that I would go two and a half years without writing any tests. How to how to add how to add tests later when you've removed them? How to add tests to Rails app that has had skip tests? How to undo skip testing that? How to undo? This is not, this is not something I've ever seen done successfully. I've seen a couple applications who have uh, ripped out testing and, uh, oh boy. Could I just say, is there a generator for just like, give me all the test stuff again? Cause presumably like all the Rails install stuff is just a series of generators, right? Okay, so those are specific tests. That's system test. So, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Shoot. Okay, now I might just need to call Eileen. <laughs> Embarrassing. All right, well, this is a short, Short first foray. Hmm. 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 I don't know what to do. Well, all right. One thing I can do. So I can take a look here at if I just, um, Okay, so now everything's in Git. So I'm just Git grab tests. Most of these are comments, huh? Do I have a config environment for test? First of all, uh, config and test. Okay, check. I have an application system test case. Do I have a test helper? Yes. Do I have a fixtures folder? Also, yes. I, I couldn't have skipped all of it, right? Okay. 
So why don't I have the rake tusk? Well, okay, so I guess I, I, if I do actually go through and bundle this, I should be able to see what rake tusks are available to me and then figure out why. Um, maybe I ripped them out of my rake setup somehow? So if I like look at rake here, uh, no. I think the tasks are in config, config lib. No, I mean, well, they're all built in. Oh, wait, hold on. Ha ha, they're probably all here in this real tie. Good grief. All right. B Rails test system, which will delegate probably to the right task. Hey, uh, look at that. All right. Well, it didn't find our test, but it successfully ran just to make sure that's what that's doing. All right. So uh, if you, if pro tip, if you use Rails, you can turn on or off just about any major function that you want uh, by going down to uh, uh, your application and uh, commenting out a particular rail tie. By default, it'll say require rails all, but you can also cherry pick the frameworks you want. All right, well, um, it really seems like this should only ever load when you're in the test group, to be honest. I don't know why it loads in production. It seems wrong. Um, anyway, that's probably why I commented out. Uh, okay, well, why doesn't it find our test? Is one question. Hello, Capybara. Yeah, what if, do I need to say, do one of these fancy things? Do dad, do end. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, let's see if the generator works now. Oh, that's neat. So that fixed that problem. So it thinks that test should look like this, which I guess, you know, is not far off of what this one's doing. So we'll, I don't know why my uh, fan is going haywire. Yeah. Okay. This is totally gonna work. Oops. Uh, good. Well, that was slower. <laughs> What's that do? What does that config mean in this context? Why is it? Why is that doing that now? Uh, B Rails uh, test system. It just, will it give me the same behavior if, if I run it again? Of course not. Okay, um, hell, this is not even parsable. Okay, well, now I know it wasn't even loading that file. Uh, okay, da -da. well, shouldn't be this hard to run a single test, should it? Okay. Why? What's in here? Okay, so that loads the normal test helper. What's in here? Okay. Don't have any fixtures. Oh, you know what? Is it because it doesn't end in the word test? That's definitely possible. So if I say test system, uh, hello capybara, and I move it to a test system, uh, hello capybara test, are you gonna work? Oh, and then of course I'm gonna have the wrong name. All right. Uh, please work. Please do something. Just open a browser. Woo! Yeah! Yeah. All right. 
So it saved a screenshot. So speaking of uh, test artifacts, what's that look like? Very nice, very, yes. That is indeed what the browser was looking like. All right. Uh, assert selector is the default assert. Very often with these things, I don't write express explicit like uh, assertions very often when I'm testing browser stuff. It's just enough to like, if I click a button that has this on it, then the button was there and then I should see whatever. Um, get me to at least the root page. Okay, good login. It, does it not have, it has to have JavaScript on by default, one would think. But it, nothing's getting rendered. Well, that's not great. Why would it? There's some stuff that I'm dropping into the um, main uh, layout that maybe I'm not doing if I'm in a test environment. One way to test out what the test environment is gonna look like would be to um, start the application in the test env. So I'll just say rails env equals test. And so that it's, I don't know why that just happened. Oh, shoot. Uh, sorry, my, 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 my terminal was remembering that I'd run Rails test system. Okay, here I'm starting this in test. I'm gonna start uh, Webpacker would pack also with Rails and test. Oh, no, I'm not. All right. Okay, let's see what happens when I just hit this page. It's probably gonna blow up in the same way. Yep, good. So that there you go. So sometimes like you, you know you get a weird error uh, when you're running a test inside of like this kind of like a, a janky sandbox browser environment. You just want to see what's going on. No easier way to do that than to like run it as a dev server because then it's not going to like disappear in two seconds. So I can actually take my time, read this uh, error, which is uh, too tiny for me, my aging eyes. Okay, so CSRF token is not set. So we need to set it because we're passing that down to the client apparently. <sighs> All right, well, when with things I don't remember, I typically, I can think and get rid of this extra terminal now. I uh, git grep CSRF. So I've indeed thrown that in my layout and in my JavaScript. And there's apparently no CSRF token set in test mode. Well, all right. I mean, what I could do here is I could just fail over and, and if it's not present um, in the JavaScript, just ignore it. That strikes me as kind of stupid just because it is important that I look at this. So, so writing into the client like, hey, here's a way to ignore the authenticity token, because presumably I'm gonna need that. Who uses this? So it's a hidden value in pretty much every form because I use this module or this uh, uh, component function for pretty much every form in the app. So easier way to do it might be just enable CSRF in test mode, Rails test environment. You know, I'm already sick of this shit when I'm hitting every single uh, Google result right off the bat. Um, aha! Yeah, allow forgery protection is probably just turned off in test. So, uh, env test. 
Haha! -ha. This is totally gonna work this time. So we're gonna open up the server again. Hey, look at that. All right, cool. So, neat. Now, of course, there's nothing in this database, on, including not a user. Uh, so maybe the first thing we do is we just try to sign up. Um, you know, of course, uh, uh, one downside is that right now, when uh, Kamehasami requires that you have an API key to another service. So maybe tonight I will uh, uh, pause this 30 minute long exercise of actually accomplishing zero things. Uh, and uh, uh, remove this requirement so that we can make forward progress without having to worry about blatting in an API key here. But in the interest of just getting stuff set up, let's uh, try to drive uh, uh, the user to the root page, to the sign up, to at least see the error. It's reasonable, right? Like, hey, you should... Of course, this test is going to become invalid in like a day once this is no longer required, but at least it'll get us going. So a test uh, tries to sign up. So we hit the root. So then the first thing that I, one of the nice things about Capybara is like everything is oriented around passing arguments that like look like the English language on the screen, whatever language on the screen. Uh, so if I say click sign up with exactly this uh, phrase, it will probably just work. Click link, sign up. And in fact, I'm gonna write this confidently because it takes a while to, to run each test. Uh, and then I'm gonna say fill in, and it does the same thing with labels. And so here I've got these placeholders in lieu of labels. Do I have labels? Because from a, yeah, okay. So I do have labels and they just happen to be hidden. And then I closed the window because I got a little too excited. All right. So they do have labels and they do match these placeholders. So I'm going to say fill in a name with, and this is just me having memorized some of the Capybara DSL over the years, even though it's pretty hard to memorize API in my experience. Um, we are going to, let's pick on somebody. Uh, somebody from the company, we're gonna sign up Todd Kaufman. He's gonna, he's gonna learn Japanese, finally. Uh, and we're gonna say, fill in your email. Uh, with the dash, because I'm old school, I still use the dash. And uh, password, uh, I'm not big on like having to type in passwords multiple times, because I'm just gonna copy paste them from my password manager anyway, so it only takes one here. Uh, this has caused a surprising amount of uh, user error, uh, I guess unsurprising amount, and I have to reset a lot of people's passwords for it right out of the gate. Um, so uh, password, Todd's a big Pugs fan, so Pugs are really great. It's, it's always secure when you do a forward dasherized, I learned that from XKCD phrase. So no one will ever guess this. Uh, this is a secure password he'll be able to use for the rest of his life. Um, if I click sign up, Okay, so it show, shows that as required. I'll probably have to put something under Wanikami. Let's just, I'll say click button sign up and see what happens. Surely this is gonna have been broken. Notice here too that there's a click um, method, but there's also click link and click button in Capybara. And we just happen to have a link and a button in this script that both happen to have exactly the tag sign up. Uh, when stuff is ambiguous, Capybara tends to barf on it uh, as opposed to just pick the first one. So let's um, let's try this out again. Rails test system system. There we go. Do 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 do. Hey, it did the thing. Of course, like it it doesn't work because it probably saw a failure. So let's add a sleep to that. That was pretty. It's actually impressively fast relative to my expectation. Let's run. Well, I guess time isn't going to be that useful now because I just. Put a five second sleep at the end. Fill out this field. Yes, indeed. So, I mean, it's not wrong. Kind of, the test worked. So I'm gonna call that done. So that's Capybara. We're not doing any other custom setup here. This is just the out of the box Rails experience, which frankly is not that bad. It did take me half an hour, but that was to unwind two years of detritus <laughs> and not thinking about this. Uh, uh, if, if we'd just done the Rails new, it probably would have been much faster. Um, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for the real 
complexity of life tests. Um, all right, so capybara or cypress now. Uh, so cypress is not um, was even though uh, Brian Mann and Gleb, uh, who who created cypress uh, pr primarily initially as its developers, they came from the Ruby and Rails community. They're very familiar with uh, capybara. They're familiar with Selenium. They're familiar with RSpec. Uh, I think most of cypress is still written in CoffeeScript. Uh, they probably don't want me saying that publicly, but. I like CoffeeScript. Uh, so that, like, culturally, they're from a similar ilk. However, Cypress's Rails story isn't that fantastic out of the box. Um, so I had to write a gem called Cypress Rails to make it a little bit easier. Um, and it, I wrote it last September, and so I've already forgetten, forgotten just about everything. Oh, there's a security vulnerability. Don't tell anyone. It's probably just an example test. All right. So TLDR, I love these. Okay, install Cypress. Install the gem Cypress Rails, and then run Rake Cypress in it. All right, well, I can do that. So we're gonna say yarn add uh, development Cypress D. I, I, was, I, I don't know yarn stuff by default. I know NPMs is D. Or does yarn just copy that? because I don't want to store this as a production dependency, of course. This is probably going to take the better part of a day, based on my experience of every now, like, uh, NPM package downloading its own copy of Electron. At least I get that little dot to watch. You know what? They should let you play Snake. Remember Snake? My first cell phone, like 2000, year 2000 had Snake on it. That'd be a fun game to implement. Maybe we could do that as a browser test. All right, okay, that didn't take nearly as long. Although I, I suspect that was more than 37 seconds, but maybe me just being uh, antsy and staring at a camera made it feel longer. Okay, so Cypress is there. Uh, I'm gonna now go to my gem file, tack on gem Cypress Rails, bundle that. I'm using an unreleased version of Pry that's why that warning was there. Um, the rake cypress in it. Is that what I said it was? If you've never written a gem before, uh, uh, just because you've written the library doesn't mean you have any recollection whatsoever of how to use it uh, or whether it works. Uh, in fact, I'm probably more dubious that it works because I know who wrote it. But, all right, Kamisame cypress.json. So apparently it, it does some kind of override, huh? Aha, yes. So it dumps your screenshots and your videos in a temp directory so that it doesn't end up in a place that's tracked by Git by default because I don't want people to like, you know, uh, inadvertently commit a whole bunch of screenshots and videos to their uh, uh, directory. Additionally, I turned off trash assets before it runs, which is turned on by default. Um, and I did that because of something about the ordering that tests tend to get written in. In any case, uh, let's check our package JSON, make sure that ended up as a dev dependency. And it did. We can check down here. So these are our three dev dependencies. All right. So uh, yarn run Cypress. You know what? We're just going to use the gems shortcuts because I know this exists. So Cypress open is this command that Cypress has to run a IDE like dingus. Here we go. And it's like an interactive place to write tests that's kind of constantly watching your file system. Oh, yeah, yeah. And look at that. It didn't even ask me, do you want these examples? No, I don't. Well, now you got them. So I don't want to run any of these examples. Uh, I do want to add my own test files. It also added fixtures, plugins, commands, and index. I don't. This is too much help. All right, so uh, open up another command. Uh, rm uh, cypress exam uh, integration examples. Okay, there we go. Now there's no files. So it does pick up on the file system stuff pretty quickly. Um, I'm gonna just create one test here. Can it, can it create a test file for me in this number reported runs? So I'm in this, this neat. 
That's nice. All right, yeah, so, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Guess I can delete that folder. Uh, what's in this stuff? Ah, uh, yeah, you can, you can do uh, custom commands, custom plugins. Uh, it's somewhat extensible. Fixtures here is like, you know, um, uh, stub out uh, XHRs and whatnot. But Kamehameha actually makes use of a decent amount of uh, sockets uh, too, which I don't think they have any sort of facility for. Uh, but we're going to just ca call through full stack anyway, so we don't need to use any of that today. Uh, Cypress integration. Hello, Cypress.js. And if I don't name it test, will it still work? I suspect it will. Hello, Cypress. Okay, so here we are. Open, run. So this is what Cypress's like interactive runner looks like. And you'll see it's got no tests there, and so it views that as an error. Uh, of course, I did have a bunch of examples, uh, you might recall, and then I deleted them all because I was arrogant <laughs> and foolish. <laughs> but it's gonna it's gonna be something like this. I don't know. Describe uh, 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 the login page. And standard doesn't like this because it's a global. The logging page, login. It uh, uh, lets me sign up. There's a Jasmine-like Mocha. I'm probably using Mocha actually under the hood, but this this uh, this DSL will never die. Uh, not that it should. It's very good. It's very thoughtful, but it's a little long in the tooth, I think. Um, save this. See what happens. Hey, all right, so that quickly, it, it, it found our test. Uh, of course, it, it, it knows that we're not doing anything. It's like, hey, you might wanna do some stuff here, you side visit. All right, so we're gonna write a equivalent. Ah, I didn't pass anything to it. Uh, I love how fast I get these errors though. The feedback loop is phenomenal. Okay, cool. So is the server not running? Aha, yes, I recall now. So the reason that the gem exists <laughs> is because I don't want to have to start up a server looking at a specific port um, to say, hey, hey, drive this. And I don't know why it's assuming 61761 or whatever. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do Oh, maybe. How does that work? How does Cypress Open typically work? Would it normally run against? Okay, so Cypress Gem. Yeah, so right, Cypress Open. Yeah, so the server shouldn't it have been running. I know that I've got this test helper here for like making sure that the server is running just right, as if it were a system test case that it helps you. Whose job is it to run the Rails app? I mean, that was the whole purpose of this thing, I thought. Yeah, in fact, no, it's starting Puma. Well, what the heck? All right, I forgot. Oh wait, is it just these errors? Is this related to my problem? Webpacker can't find application in manifest JSON. And then it just blows up. Neat. Well, I guess I hadn't considered this, huh? All right. I mean, I guess I can just check the Webpacker YAML file and hope it is obvious. I worry it won't be. So yeah, the gem was working, ostensibly. Yeah, okay. I kind of want it just to look like development. Right? So... I really want it to look exactly like development, don't I?
I don't even know if I want that. Okay, we're gonna just do it that way. And we're gonna cross our fingers. We're gonna hope this just works. Neat. Uh, try that again. Okay, so now I remember what the gem's purpose is, is when I run Cypress open this way, it's gonna start my server first, and on that port, and then it's gonna tell Cypress, run Cypress on this port, and that's why the port was what it was. Six one something something something. All right, open this up. Huzzah! And that, that made it open the, the page. Little victories, okay, neato. All right, so we're gonna go back to our test here, and we were gonna say, uh, uh, first of all, oh man, there's all these globals and I hate the red. So I'm gonna make that go away by going down here and saying, hey, standard, don't just ignore this. Actually, I could just say, say ignore this, but I'm instead I'm gonna say uh, globals. You can configure certain globals and bless them uh, and just see if I can remember them all off the top of my head. So you got describe, you got it, we got expect, you got psi. Do you have expect anymore? I don't know. We'll just keep adding to this as we go. All right, so it likes all that until I get to this. Ah, it doesn't like the blink line. Okay, so to fill in something with Cypress, uh, again, I deleted my example file that would have told me what that was. Um, but instead here, uh, maybe we'll check the docs. Cypress's docs are pretty nice. Cypress IO docs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Core concepts. I want to interact with some elements. Click, double click, type. Yeah. I guess more than that, I want to find, like, first I want to select an element. Help. Help. How do I find things? I forget. Side up, get? Ah, yes, get. In fact, this is an area where um, uh, the runner is kind of neat. Uh, is it here? All right, so one of the things this runner does is it kind of helps you create selectors for yourself. So if I click this little target here, open selector for playground, you see it actually creates the sci.get or sci.contains. So I can click, um, you know, anywhere in the screen and say, hey, I want to sign up. And it'll generate a not super clever, um, I, you know, this is kind of like a stupid selector in my opinion because like this URL might change, but like, frankly, the, the text is more important. Um, so if I say sci.contains, uh, I can, come on, could, does that not work? What if I just say sign up? Okay, well, at least I can type that and it'll find that there was just one option. So I'm gonna copy that and then I'm gonna paste it in. And I'm gonna go back here. Did it already run? I guess it already ran. Well, in any case, I'm gonna click it, click it. That's totally gonna work. Hey, and it, it really is that fast. That's pretty slick. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. All right. Uh, so now we're gonna sign up the same way we did before. Now, one of the things that Cypress is a bummer about is that it doesn't seem to care about like selecting English language text the same way that um, uh, Capybara does. So if I just say like sci.contains and then name. Wait, did that actually work this time? Oh, maybe they updated it. Maybe it's a new feature. Uh, type. Uh, I'm gonna pick on a new person, Jason Carnes. Jason, you're finally gonna learn some Japanese. Well, that didn't seem to work because this element, aha. So the label is name. What we would need to do is we would need to find, so I've written plugins that do this before. I think I even have an NPM module called, uh, oh, what is it called? Did I, did I make this? Uh, so not Cypress Rails, Cypress Capybara. Capybara finders re implement those custom Cypress things. Find link, find field, find button. Yeah, so that's one option. Um, <laughs> weekly downloads, 141. In other cases I've written, I've rewritten this yet again in other ways. I'm choosing, uh, let's just go along to get along and just write this as, uh, uh, as the app would suggest we write it. So here I'm gonna click an element. Come on. Okay, you know what? That's fine. I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna say, type this, 
see how we do. And that worked fine. In fact, that was quite fast. So here we go. Uh, Jason is a very privacy conscious person, but I'm gonna publicly name his email address. Uh, I'm gonna just guess that that ID works. Huh, you know what? It's, it's been picking up all this and then it doesn't pick that up. That's weird. Did I mess up? I mean, it's right there. Is there not, is it failing? No. If I hard refresh this page? Why is everything so hard? If I move this up, then it works. But not if it's, okay, cool. You know, watching files, uh, still not a solved problem. We will die long before a Unix system can watch files correctly under Mac OS X. Um, all right, we're gonna give him a password to, uh, uh, Jason tends to use very secure passwords. I know Jason pretty well, so like, like it's gonna be at least that long. Uh, and then we're gonna save the file and then we're gonna be disappointed by the outcome. <laughs> Again, what is going on? I guess if I click this, I bet you it's smart. Sure isn't. Run all specs. Let's saw it that way. Very nice. That's super secure looking. I like it. Uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna click sign up ultimately. And here I can use sign up contains again. So here this is definitely ambiguous, but it just so happens that we're on a different page now, so it's the only thing that says sign up. So it did click it, but then nothing happened. And that's where we're gonna end for today. So this is setting up Cypress versus Capybara. Uh, only took an hour. Uh, and uh, I hope you had uh, as much fun as I did. Uh, next up, when uh, we look at uh, what we're doing, so we got that. Next, we're gonna write a real test. Uh, and that's only gonna take, you know, as long as it takes. Uh, but uh, it's actually a fun kind of side-by-side -side of like what it's like to get the two rolling. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, we'll pick it up from there and try to do something real, like make an actual account and go through and maybe do something with the application that's meaningful. Uh, but yeah, if you have any uh, 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 feedback, questions, concerns, feel free to uh, at me uh, on the internet. I'm that guy. Uh, and uh, yeah, all right, can't, can't wait to keep banging my head against the wall with you. All right, see you later.